All right, welcome back. So the goal this time is to start learning about implementation. The implementation we're going to focus on for most of these videos is a PLC. We'll do some pick stuff at the end. Um, the reason we focus on this is because that's what you have to learn for a lab, whatever nine it is. All right, so our goal here is to implement the finite state machine. Um, and so this is kind of like building something up from the plans. Um, so here I've got a little plan of building a ladder because we're building ladder logic. Um, but we've got our dog finite state machine. To be honest, the finite state machine is a little bit incomplete right now because it doesn't have like those state numbers. Um, none of the eyes or, or outputs have numbers on those. Um, so there needs to be a little bit more definition. Let's go ahead and start by putting on the cues, like what cue number it is and what input number it is first. So for this, you probably need somebody to tell you how the system is wired. Um, if you were actually building the system yourself, you could decide. But here, we'll just kind of pretend like somebody's telling you how the system is wired. So they're just telling you, hey, you've got a um, I1, which represents the sun in your system. So there's some sensor that detects the sun. Uh, it's I1. Um, and it is, oops, it says here, momentary, I meant to say, position. Um, and then you've got an I2, which represents whether there's noise or not. Um, and this one really is momentary, so that one's right. I'll fix the notes. So those are your two inputs, I1 and I2. Uh, your timer, we're going to say to use timer 1. Why not? We can use timer 1, that's fine. And then uh, completely arbitrarily fixed, snoring is Q1, um, barking is Q2. Like this is our representation of a dog, right? Maybe we're building a robotic dog, who knows? So we go ahead and add those things to our finite state machine yet next. Um, so I've got those added already. So you can see that we just stuck an I2 on the noise. Uh, we stuck an I1 on the sun. Um, and then we put the I1 uh, under the bar. To be honest, usually when I make a finite state machine, I just say the I1 or the I2. But here I said both. Uh, we stuck the cues uh, on barking and uh, snoring. Great. So now we've added our cues. Next thing we need to know is how we want to number these things. There are a lot of ways to do this. Really what needs to happen is each state needs to be ID, um, uniquely identified. So you could have, if you wanted, used the markers kind of like binary, like sleeping would be 0, 0, like broken, broken. Uh, barking would be 0, 1, and then couch would be 1, 0. It turns out to be a little bit easier to do it differently. It turns out to easier to use an individual marker for each state. So what we're going to do is we're going to give each of these guys a state um, and we're just going to label uh, this first one as uh, marker one uh, and then two and then three. I think if I had this to do again I would have put barking on the bottom but who cares. Um, the idea is that you should always have exactly one marker on. No more no less, right? So if you have marker one is on, you're sleeping. Two is on, you're on the couch. 3 is on your barking. If you have 1 and 3 on, then you've made a programming error, right? So you shouldn't do that. Um, and then it'll turn out to be easier to implement if we kind of go with this approach. So I've picked what's a relatively arbitrary choice for my marker 1, 2, and 3, uh, but this is the finite state machine. It's ready to be implemented. Uh, let's fire up PicoSoft. So fire up PicoSoft here. Uh, save anything if you've got anything open. Mine's a, a clean start today. Drag over the PLC we're using, which is just the top guy. Uh, come over into the circuit diagram. Um, and now we're ready to start. Uh, so the first thing that I typically want to do is I do that reset line. Uh, this is actually kind of a challenge um, because what we want to do is we want when the system turns on to go into marker one being on. That doesn't happen for free. You have to like make that happen. Um, there are a couple ways to do this. Uh, the first way, which is what I'm going to do today, is I'm just going to say, you know, hey, if all the markers are off, so like if marker 1 uh, is broken and marker 2 is broken and marker 3 is broken, then just set marker 1, right? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and give these guys states just so I can remember what they are. So marker 1 is sleeping. And then that way it will just be easier for me to identify. Marker 2 says when he's on the couch. And marker 3 says when he is barking. 
All right, so there I've got my reset line. There's another way to do it. Um, we'll do it. We'll do the other way next time. Um, there's this thing. Dr. Olson came up with this one. Um, so you can make a timer be a single pulse. Uh, so if your top rung has a timer, which is a single pulse, um, and then with some interval, I chose like 50 milliseconds, so something, you know, short but not real, real short. Um, then that single pulse should set marker one. That actually works fine. And it's kind of nice to do that whenever you've got a lot of markers. Uh, but for this one, we've only got three. It fits on one rung, which is nice. Um, so I'm just going to do it this way, right? All right, so really what we're doing is we're just implementing these things. So I'd say that's a check. Uh, reset has been implemented, right? So now we've just got to start going around our figure, uh, finding something to implement. Uh, just because I feel like it, I'm going to implement the uh, the sun, uh, which puts him onto the couch. So it's just we're just going to do this one together. Uh, so if he's currently sleeping, and he sees an I1, so I1, I'm just going to go ahead and say that is the sun. So if he sees an I1 if it becomes made, then what he's going to do is he's going to transition out of this state. So he's going to reset marker one and he's going to set uh, the couch. And then you have to draw a line. I typically do it, I just grab the center of this one and the center of this one, and then it just snaps on the right place. This is the pattern you're gonna see a lot, right? So if you're going from one state to another, you have to turn off the old marker, um, and then you have to turn on the new marker. Um, and so if you have an I1 and you're in that state, then transition, right? It's not, not, not brain surgery here. Uh, let's do some more. So next one is if we're in marker one uh, and we see an I2, um, an I2 is noise, then what we're going to do is we're going to reset uh, marker one and we're going to set uh, marker three. All right, that one's fine. Uh, and then this is fine, but I'm gonna show you a sneakier way to do it. Um, so you'll notice that uh, I2 takes you into state three regardless of what state you're in, right? So it doesn't matter what's going on. Um, it just always takes you there. So we could leave this rung right here. So this, this rung um, still just called one rung even though it's got two on it. Um, and make a very, very similar one uh, for marker two transitioning over, but instead I'm going to do something sneaky. Instead I'm going to do this. I'm going to say if we have an I2, then I don't care what marker I'm in, right? Because if I get an I2, I want to have to retype the name on it because I deleted my only instance of it. Uh, this is noise. Um, then I want to set uh, marker three and then just because I don't know which state I'm in, I'm just going to reset them all, right? And resetting them all is actually totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, you could always reset them all if you wanted. Like like this first state, we could have reset marker three. Sorry, reset, yeah, marker three. It's just that we knew there was no point, right? So there would have been no harm in having another reset, but there was no point. Um, whereas here it might happen. And I only mention this because you do clever things like this all the time, and it's just to make your code shorter, right? So you could have done it. It turned out it only really saved us one line. Um, you could have done it uh, separate, uh, but it's easy enough to merge, uh, so we'll just do it together. Um, and if you're really like obsessive compulsive, you could put them in a different order, uh, but I can see that they're all there, so I'm not worried about it. Now we just keep, so check mark on both of those guys, right? Uh, now we just keep going around. I mean, you can pick whatever order you want. Uh, there's nothing sacred about it. Um, I suppose I should pick something systematic. But really, I just I have a sheet of paper next to me, and I just mark them off when they're done. Uh, so here I'll do, um, if I'm in marker two, um, and I see the sun goes down, so the sun gets broken. So no more sun, time to go to bed. So I'm going to uh, reset, it's really annoying that I don't have much screen real estate. I'm going to reset marker two and then I'm going to set marker one. So that means you uh, become sleeping again. 
Uh, once you've got all the arrows done, then the next thing... I'm actually still missing an arrow. I don't have the timing one done yet. Um, but after you finish the arrows in general, then you start on the outputs. Uh, the outputs have to be controlled with cues. Typically what I like to do is I like to make the cues be contactors. So they, they depend on like the state that something is in. Uh, later it'll get a little bit more complex, but in general they, they depend on the state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a marker 3 here. And if we ever see a marker 3, then Q2, which is barking, is going to be on, right? So if I'm in that state, um, it's a contactor, which means as soon as I go out of that state, it'll turn off. As soon as I enter that state, it'll turn on. It just follows Q3 perfectly. Um, so I've actually checkmarked you know, that guy inside the box. Um, but I also want this marker to uh, drive timer 1 as well. The way I think about timers in this case is the timer is like trying to get me out of the function, right? So like as soon as, as, soon as you start hitting it, it's trying to get you out. It's just got to get to its set point before it kicks you out. Um, timers used in this fashion are on delays. So this is an on delay timer. Uh, and this one we said was five minutes. I'm going to set it to five seconds because I don't want to take forever to test my program. Um, and it is an on delay, so that's good. If you wanted to give it a name, you could. You know, you could call it barking time. Uh, that's fine. As soon as that timer actually comes on, um, it's going to kick you out of the state. I know that the only possible way the timer could come on is I, I would have to be in marker three. Um, but just because I like to be systematic, I'm going to say if I'm in marker 3 and the timer comes on, uh, then I move out, right? You know, it depends on how much, uh, how thorough you like to be. Um, so this guy is going to set uh, the couch because he's going to go to the couch. And then it's going to reset uh, barking. So we're no longer barking. So uh, there we go. That implements the, uh, the timer uh, pushing you into the couch. Uh, so I think that I'm all set except for I've got one more cue to do. Uh, so if I'm ever in marker 1, then I do Q1. Probably should have put that one earlier, but eh, this is where it hit. All right, and then you, you look at your, your finite state machine. Um, if everything's got a check mark by it, uh, it should work, right? Uh, so let's go into the simulation. Uh, we said that I1, which was the sun, is position. So that was a position, normally open position. And then noise is momentary. So there's just like a, a roof or a, you know, a dog outside that makes a noise that causes you to bark. Uh, and now we're ready to try this thing. So I'm going to start off. What I like to do is I like to, if possible, um, put my cues to where I can see them right on the screen. So like here's a Q1 at the bottom, here's a Q2 up there. Um, and then I show my markers down here so I can see where I'm at, like see what cues are on, and at the same time looking at my markers. So I hit play. Uh, right now the sun is down. Um, I'm in the sleeping state, which I can see right here. And I can just barely see this wrong. I can see that I'm snoring away happily. Um, if the sun goes comes on, so the sun comes up, um, so you can see there's the fire of the sun, <laughs> um, then I move to the couch. Um, and when I'm on the couch, I can see that both of my cues are off, so that's good. And then if I have an I2, which is noise, uh, I start barking. Um, here you could transition over to the timers, um, and you could watch it counting, but you can see it made it about five seconds, and then he went back on the couch. If you want to ever watch your timers, you can just click on uh, the T here, um, and then that'll let you watch your timers. So I'm going to hit it again. Um, and you can see that my timer is counting up and up and up. Um, you can see that timer's here. And then there the timer went off. Um, and then it reset. Great. I think I've checked almost everything. Um, I just want to check that if the sun goes out, uh, I go back to sleeping. And then this one's sneaky. If I hear a noise while I'm sleeping, so if I hit an I2, uh, he starts barking for his five minutes, five seconds. And then as soon as he's done barking, he just shoots right through to sleeping. If your eyes were really good, you could see it kind of like flash the couch, right? Because he like went past the couch on his way to bed. Uh, and that's great. That's fine. 
All right, I think that this guy is fully implemented. Uh, I think you're good to go. To be honest, this was a fairly easy problem, um, and we kind of worked it together. Uh, so what I really want to do is I want to give you a bigger problem uh, and see if you can tackle it on your own next time. All right, see you then.